Okay, we are going to solder. Uh, I think it's like a it's like a T SOP four eight three eight if I remember right. I'll put it in the uh, video description exactly what it is with a link to it. Uh, infrared sensor um, and this is a like a Wemos. I don't know how to pronounce it. Wemos D one. It's an ESP eight two six six. Uh, this is just a, I think, a cheapo like clone that I found on Amazon. So we are going to solder this uh, infrared sensor to the five volt ground in D4 pins, and we're going to solder it in this orientation. It's going to end up at a 90 degree angle facing up like this, the same direction as this chip. The way we're going to do that, so we're just going to take this and just insert the pins like that. We're just going to stop right where the pins get fatter, like this. And then we're just going to bend this so that it's about a 90 degree angle, like that. And then we're going to solder it in place like that. You can just set it on your desk and you can just solder it like that. Uh, but things do wiggle around and it can be a little bit hard. Um, so I do highly suggest these helping hands. These are real cheap on the internet. I'll, uh, I'll put an Amazon affiliate link in the video description. They're real cheap and they're real handy for soldering and it would help if we put it at the right orientation. There we go. Put it just like that and then we're going to use the other, make sure it's tight up against that corner and then use the other little alligator clip to hold this in place. There we go. All right, now once it's all, once it's all clipped together, I'm gonna pick the whole unit up and make sure that I'm still sitting at a nice sharp 90 degree angle. And I am, that looks good. So I'm just gonna set that back down. Now we're gonna do some soldering. I'm gonna start out zoomed out uh, because I'm gonna give you some soldering tips if you already know how to solder, I apologize. Um, you probably can quit the video now if you already know how to solder. Um, if you'd like some tips on soldering, stick around for a second because that's really the, a lot of the focus of this video. I've got this fancy soldering station here, but a cheapo $15 or whatever soldering iron will work too. Um, I will put an affiliate link for a cheapo soldering iron that I have used before and I know works well enough, um, as well as an affiliate link if I can find one for this exact soldering station or one really similar. I can attest to the quality of these things. They're really solid. Also this right here and this right here, this is used to clean your soldering tip. It is uh, like brass wool, I guess. And this is rosin flux. Here's what the lid looks like. This is, uh, this is my favorite type of flux. It's hard, so it doesn't get everywhere. A lot of fluxes are sticky. In my opinion, you do specifically want rosin flux. It's really important that we take a second as it's really coming up to temperature, clean it, get it with a little bit of flux, and put some fresh solder on the tip. This is called tinning the tip, and it's extremely important. Um, if we don't do that, as the iron comes up to temperature, eventually, our tip will become oxidized and it won't work very well for us anymore. So that's how you keep the tip from getting all crazy and oxidized. Fresh solder with some flux. Now we're gonna do basically the same thing right before we solder. So what I'm gonna do is clean it off, put some flux on, put some solder on, and then solder. And then start over and do it again. We are up to temperature now, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it. I'm gonna clean my tip. Little bit of flex, little bit of solder, and then I'm going to place the soldering iron on the pad, so it's barely touching the pad and the pin, and then after a few seconds, apply some fresh solder, and then remove it. 
I'm going to zoom in so you can get a better look at the next two. The timing is important. If you leave it on there too long, you can overheat components, and we don't want to do that. Um, so what you want to do, clean it, fresh flux, fresh solder, gently touch it to the pin. You want it to be touching both the, the pin and the pad on the board. Wait about three or four seconds, apply some fresh solder, wait one or two seconds, then and then remove the soldering iron and don't touch anything while it cools off. And when we're done, I'm gonna show you how to inspect for a cold solder joint. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing again. Clean off the tip, little bit of flex, apply a tiny bit of solder. I'm having to do this from kind of far away, so apologies. Okay. If you have trouble getting the solder to melt, that means you need to clean the tip again and give it some more flux. Okay, now touch it lightly to the pad. Wait a few seconds, apply some fresh solder. Wait, remove. There it is. All right, clean off the tip. Fresh flux. Fresh solder. You kind of want the flux to be smoking like that. If it stops smoking, you should start over. Okay, apply to the, I did not, I swear that just happened because I was on camera. Pretend that didn't happen. Okay, don't touch the pins next door. A little bit of solder, wait, remove. And look at that, I bridged those two pins. That is not what you want to do. Normally you want your whole setup to be close enough to your face to keep that from happening. So this is a great example of a mistake that you can make. We're just going to desolder like that. See how I disconnected those? Now that's all, not always gonna work. Sometimes you need to bring some copper in here or something to suck some solder away. Uh, but it worked okay this time. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to we're, we, we can't just leave those pins like that. We probably screwed up the solder connection when we, when we did that. So I'm gonna apply some new flux. The new flux is gonna let me melt the solder, maybe. Yeah, there we go. Okay. I'm just kind of removing excess solder, if you can see that. This is turning out to be a how to fix a mistake in soldering video. I'm just kind of removing a little bit of solder. That's probably pretty good. So I'm not gonna leave it like that because uh, I, I think I mentioned a second ago, this is probably a cold solder connection now or it, or it has high, I'll say it has high likelihood. So what we're gonna do is fix it. So be careful not to bridge them again. Fresh flux. Get this solder to melt, and then apply a tiny, tiny bit. Oh, hang on. I need to clean again. Clean. Flux. I think I spent so much time talking that I got a little oxidation on my solder tip. There we go. Okay. I'm just doing some cleaning, which is basically just repeatedly the same process. Clean it off, flux, solder, clean it off, flux, solder. There. Okay. All right. I got rid of that oxidation. oxidation. You can tell when you've got some oxidation building up on your soldering tip because it starts to look dull and a darker color. You want it to look nice and shiny. There we go. Okay. Now, try this again. A little fresh solder, boom. Okay, that one's fixed. We're gonna do the exact same thing to the one next door. Clean off my tip. Tiny little bit of fresh solder. I got a little too much because I'm trying to do it in front of the camera. Tiny little bit of solder, just barely touch it to this pad. Tiny bit of fresh solder and then remove it. There we go, okay. All right, let's take a close look. Mm, 
I still, I am not happy with that solder joint right there. Can I get it in focus? The one that I just did, can you see how it looks a little dull instead of shiny? That is not great. That means that we are at high risk for a cold solder joint. I know I've been talking about those a lot, but this is what happens when you mess up. Get this back in focus. All right, so this time, since we don't have a, a couple of pins bridged, this is real simple. All we need to do is just make sure we've got some flux, properly heat that pin until it melts, and get the solder to flow, and we're done. It should freeze again. There, all right, we're melted. Apply some fresh solder, wait a second, pull it off. It should not go hazy this time. Yeah, there we go. Okay. See how it's a lot shinier this time? Um, I'm all done. So now when I'm putting the soldering iron away, I'm gonna do the same cleaning procedure, clean it off. A little bit of flux, tiny bit of solder. And then I'm gonna turn my soldering iron off put it back in its cradle. There's no voids or uh, holes anywhere. Everything looks nice and shiny. Nothing looks like a cold solder connection. So I'm gonna call that good and uh, go ahead and clip the leads. There we go. Uh, that's uh, close enough to a 90 degree angle. I might, there we go. Now, I'm gonna pop this thing in its case. This is a 3D printed case. I will put a link to the uh, STL files in the open SCAD files for this case in the video description. I also sell this case printed already. If you don't have a 3D printer uh, for pretty cheap on my store at store.bitemycash.com if you want to uh, check it out. There's a link in the video description, but this is the result um, We plug in uh, micro USB or whatever it's called here and Then we program this ESP Board with instructions to read this little guy which I have another video explaining how to do which is linked in the video description And then we can use this to control stuff around the house